Today in Siargao, I'm finally eating at my buddy David's restaurant, Sev, a ceviche quinello place that's now one of the island's most popular restaurants. Look at the plating. And then mine. This is all just by my staff. They're all from here, so I'm so, so proud of them because they can, they can do stuff like this, which yeah. I think can do very well anywhere in the world. This is Grace. Grace. Hello, Mark. Hello, hello. Para makita na ah, mahighlight rin natin maliban sa pagkain. Yung mga gumawa. Yeah. Ganda ng plating, guys. Very level up. All right, this is the team. Team Seth. Thank you. Thank you, Galeng. All the appetizers, they're all from the off-cuts of the fish, right? Yep. The fish that we don't use for the main cuts for the ceviche and the quinilao. So this is basically a grilled fish belly. The marinade is kind of like a liempo style. Okay. That's the marinade of this grilled fish belly. This is our classic quinilao. Mm -hmm. It's just our version of the local quinilao, which I really don't want to butcher. So mm -hmm. it's just kind of like a different way to prepare mm -hmm. uh, a standard quinilao. Mm -hmm. This is um, fried fish balls. Um, again, from the cuts that we don't use, and it kind of has like a, an Asian flavor to it, like an Asian style fish ball. Okay. Um, and then these are our spring rolls, which are also from the cuts that we don't use, and it has a blue cheese dressing on it. Gordon Ramsay once said that you can't pair blue, fish, uh, blue cheese with fish, but when we tried it, we were like, no, we can, we can. We can. <laughs> So this is actually one of our best sellers and a lot of people like there it. There you go. So, Gordon, uh, Arika, come over. <laughs> uh, and then, so we move to the main course. Um, two of our best sellers, one is the Kinilao, this is General Luna. Um, it has spiced mango, an ensaladang talong, which is just your normal ensaladang talong with tuba, garlic, and grilled eggplant. Yep. Then we got some fried kamote, which we love to use. Uh, and then the fish. And the fish is in a sauce or a, 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 a marinade of tuba, coconut milk, a lot of ginger, a lot of onions, a lot of garlic. Very aromatic. And then we have um, tausi, which is uh, like um, salted black beans. Yeah. Which I think in other parts of the Philippines, they put that in their kinilao. So oh. yes, that's, yes. that's why I put that. Uh, the other best seller is the Pacifico. So this one is just kind of like my version of a standard ceviche, which has um, sweet potato or kamote, there's some corn, uh, around it is the leche de tigre, which is again coconut milk, ginger, onions, garlic, but um, it has calamansi juice instead of lime juice, because we don't have limes in the Philippines, so we use calamansi, or we don't have limes in Siargao, <laughs> so we use calamansi. Mm. Um, and then this is our version of a sinoglau. Hmm. Um, so there's grilled pork belly there, same marinade as the as the, the, belly. Uh, the belly, and then our sauce is kind of like a red bell pepper, roasted red bell pepper sauce with tuba. Um, so it's kind of like a kinilao, but we added a bell pe roasted bell pepper sauce to it, and we have this local lime called biasong. It's not readily available, or it's in, in bulk, mm -hmm. so we try to save it, and that's why we ask our customers to just kind of squeeze it over this and not everything because we don't, you can't really find a lot of it. But mm -hmm. it's native to Mindanao, mm -hmm. you can't find this in Manila or anywhere else. Nice. Um, and then this is our um, grilled, grilled shrimp kinilao. So there's some grilled shrimp in there, there's some hibi, which is baby shrimps that are dried, salted and dried. And then we have green mango that's pickled, same kind of like um, kinilao sauce as the general luna, but we add the biasong to this one, to this sauce. And then we added cilantro, so this is a bit more fragrant and vibrant than the rest. So we don't serve plain rice, we only serve garlic rice, because I feel garlic rice is best consumed with everything, especially <laughs> with our food here. So I've eaten this with plain rice and it, to me personally, it just didn't do the job as much as the garlic rice did. So only garlic rice. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> it's so aromatic, I can smell from here. Yeah. Mm. 
This is the local kefir lime. Mm. Yeah. Wow. This is nice, Swiss balls. Swiss ball, yeah. No extenders. None, none, none. Pure fish, yeah. Pure yeah. fish. What's a little the, bit of sesame oh. oil, you know. What's the sauce again? Uh, the sauce is like, it's, the sauce here actually is like a, it's a shawarma sauce. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so where are you before you start out? Well, I was, <laughs> I, was, um, I was in Manila, I was a stockbroker, I was in finance, we did it for 10 years. And then I would fly back and forth to Hong Kong, of course, because our head office is there. I don't regret it because, you know, it allows me to run a business properly. Um, there's a lot of businesses that have a good concept, you know, like good product, but if you don't know the business side of it or the finance side of it, then the longevity of that business is not as secure, I think. So I don't regret quitting my job too, which you should. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. <laughs> Well, thank you for a good meal. That was super My good. My pleasure. My pleasure. But first of all, lang, I can't get over how beautiful this place is. Thank you. Thank so, you. where did you get your like design talent? Is it from the family? Or maybe, yeah, I think because, you know, my parents also, they, they like, I mean, they, to me, they have good taste. Uh -huh. And so obviously, and you can't buy taste. And you can't buy taste. And, you know, growing up, you traveled a lot too. Mm -hmm. and, you know, you're exposed to a lot of different things. So right. maybe that shaped my taste also uh -huh. growing up. But I have a particular taste of, I love old stuff. Uh -huh. I'm, very, I'm a very nostalgic person. Uh -huh. So I love stuff from the 50s to 60s, you know, really old, and especially in design. Yeah. So that's why this whole place, to me, I wanted to make it feel like a house from the 60s or uh -huh. the 50s, like your Lola's house. Right. And there that, there's that certain feeling, right? There's that a you feeling get. that you get, you know, when, whenever you go to your Lola's house, it's, so that's what I always tell my staff, that when, you, when people come in here, imagine it's your birthday and people are um, visiting your house on your birthday and make it just feel like a family kind of vibe. There are days, there are good days, there are bad days. There are good days and bad days. There are days that there's no fish. Yes, <laughs> today there's no fish. Yeah. Unfortunately, the reality in the island is even if we are in an island and surrounded by water, mm. if the waves are big or if there's a holiday or if the fishermen just aren't really feeling like they need to fish, Sometimes it's hard to get fish, especially right. there's a lot of new restaurants, people, I mean, these restaurants require fish as well. The demand is higher. The demand is higher, so, you know, it's, it's just a bit more challenging nowadays to get fish. Um, and so you really have to plan ahead. Even if we planned ahead, it's still, cool it wasn't enough. Yeah. yeah, so like today we had to close for lunch because we ran out of fish. Hmm. And then that's just the reality. It's a bit frustrating for a guy like me because I'm very, you know, Perfectionist, detail-oriented, right. and they want things really how it should be. Right. But you know that's that's how it is. Tell me about your food philosophy or your approach on food. I notice you like textures. I do. Yeah. And uh, your plating is very pretty, Thank very you. nice. Thank you. What's where's the where's this inspiration um, coming from? To be honest, and I've thought about this quite a lot before. I think now, the more I think about it, it's from my time in Thailand. So, in the beginning of my cooking career, which was kind of late in my life, when I was maybe 30 years old, I decided to go to Thailand for a month because I love Thai food. And my initial concept for a restaurant was Northern Thai cuisine, particularly from Chiang Mai. Mm -hmm. So I spent a lot of time in Chiang Mai learning how to cook. So that's kind of where I got trained mm -hmm. in Chiang Mai, just to cook. And then mm -hmm. in Chiang Mai, the food is very bold. The flavors are sour, spicy, salty, everything. And the textures are all there. And I think that's really what um, inspired me or what still drives me mm -hmm. in every dish I make. Mm -hmm. It's that background from Chiang Mai. Mm -hmm. And they have this very popular dish called Khao Soi, which is kind of like a laksa, mm. but it's their own version. Mm. Because, but it has um, crunchy noodles and fresh noodles. Mm -hmm. So there's a texture difference already in that dish. And then they have pickled uh, mustard leaves oh. and then it's a curry sauce uh -huh. and then there's fresh onion so you know it's just that every single thing and then there's a fresh lime that you squeeze on it that layer of it's flavors layer, layer, layer. and that's I think that's really what inspired me because yeah. I used to do pop-ups of cooking cow soy uh, only okay. in Manila 
Right. And it's nice that you apply that to Filipino food. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, obviously we're Filipino and yeah. we want to be, we want to promote Filipino food in our own way. I'd rather do something that's more unique and when you eat this, you know it's me. This is super cool what you're doing because Kinilaw has never been prepared this way. It's a first of its kind, right? Right. Hirap siya replicate because it's you. There's that personal touch. Right. Every corner of this space is special. Um, I mean, I mean, even the resident cat. <laughs> Lahat may kwento. You guys are upping the ante, um, you know, raising the standards of the island, and you guys are very good for the island. My whole point in the restaurant was I wanted to promote Kinelao to foreigners, obviously. Because right. To me, when you talk about Filipino food, you always talk about lechon or adobo, but you never talk about Kinelao, right? Mm. But to me, it's a great representation of the country itself because we're an island country. Right. So we have a lot of beaches, a lot of ocean, a lot of seafood, you know. And so Kinelao to me represents the country very well. Yep. And so I wanted to promote that in Chargao because particularly in Chargao, there's a lot of like open-minded and young tourists. To your point a while ago, um, I didn't want to butcher the like the local version of Kinilao because mm. to me that's amazing, that's the best. But I'm not from here and I don't want to copy it and I don't want to even put it on my plate because right. it's for people to try when you meet the local surfer. You go to his house and he makes you Kinilao. That's a, be that's a really amazing experience. Or if you just meet the local and then they make you a kinilaw in the boodle fight or somewhere in their house or something, you know. And so I didn't want to do that. I wanted to do something that felt right to me. Mm -hmm. And so this is what it was. And by promoting it, at least people now know that there's a ceviche counterpart in the Philippines, which is kinilaw. That's amazing, man. We need more restaurants like Sev because most of the time, when foreigners arrive to the Philippines, they, they go to some random place that don't, you know, have that amount of respect to their, right. to their restaurant or their eatery. And these foreigners have a different impression. And now that you're here, and then when they taste it, and they're like, oh wow, this is Filipino food. It's amazing. I just want to say also, I'm so proud of my staff. Yep. Because they are local Shargaonons. Yep. And we have people from around the world coming here, trying our food, eating our food, and just so happy with the type of food that we we put yep. out, yep. and it's just by people from Chargao. You know, they're not trained chefs, they didn't go to cooking school, and yet they can make stuff like this. And so I'm so, so, so proud of them. And it just goes to show that, you know, Filipinos can achieve global standards if right. we are just able to make them understand what to do and just right. train them well. You right. know, it's just, it's just a matter of that because Filipinos are very, very talented people. Yeah, I want to give you a hug. <laughs> no, really. No, really. Like it's you can see it. Um, I've been coming here for a while, and then the service and the vibe of the people—you can tell that they're happy, yeah. and they, they, you can tell that they're happy working for you guys. And the output is really—it's—it's it's special. Thank you. Thank you. For Miranda, we're visiting Shanti Shanti, a hidden hole-in-the-wall cafe and bakery run by an actual French baker, Antoine, who moved to Sergal from France and started here from scratch. A hole in the wall bake shop. Mm -hmm. Hello. Look, he's, ba he's uh, more, hi. Hey bro! Uh, how, how old or new is this place? Uh, four months only. Oh, okay, yes. very new. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you, bro. Still trying to figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> we like we the, all do. Yeah, there are some days where it's not working. <laughs> that's, the, um, that's the challenge, you know, working with uh, living things and uh, living culture like Saudo. Uh, kombucha, yeah. yeah, all this is like, it's wild, you know, <laughs> especially with the weather, you have more control when you're back in uh, Europe, what country, but still. Sorry this to is party pan au chocolat for tomorrow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. 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 Sourdough pan au chocolat. Sourdough pan au chocolat, and these are going to be the plié au chocolat. Oh, my God. Oh. <laughs> And you think this is going to be good? 
<laughs> I don't know, yesterday they were fucked. No, uh, the, the one from this morning, they were total catastrophe. But uh, it's okay, I just sold it. Uh, you can like, swear, uh, it's okay, yeah, we'll just Yeah, lower, lower price. Yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah. now I think the pan chocolate are gonna be okay. And yeah, yeah we will see, we will see. Okay. It's all, yeah, yeah, it's gonna yeah. be fine. Huh? Yeah. Now it's like the bulk rice. We're gonna put it in the fridge and tomorrow we're gonna bake it. It's just that this morning I tried to proof it uh -huh. more and it's not working. I just need to bake it straight away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, you know, like every day I'm Trial trying a new. Yeah. Okay, today it works well, but let's try like this. Okay, this is not working. <laughs> <laughs> so, I get some bread now. You get, we want some banana bread? I okay. should try the sandwiches too. Very good. Very good. You get one of those, the rustic and the goat cheese. Okay. And then maybe, how big is like a slice? One slice is like this, and it's 70 pesos. Maybe we can do two? Yeah, together. Two slices. Okay. And five ginger here. Yeah. Okay. Hi, Mama. <laughs> I hope you're proud of me. Look at me, Mama. <laughs> Look at me, Mama. I don't know if you prefer a fork or a spoon. Or mm -hmm. even we'll what just do you recommend? <laughs> <laughs> I just use my hands. Yes. <laughs> I was just gonna say Camille makes mm. not so great banana bread. There's <laughs> 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 like banana, banana bread. So light. Oh, but the like... banana you taste right away. Mm. Okay, here it is. Wow. Oh, grilled cheese Whoa. with custard. And the rest thick. <laughs> Yes. Wow. All right. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> she she has a question. Yes. Did you use sugar for this or is this honey? Uh, it's sugar. Sugar. Yeah, sugar. But there's butter. Yeah, but uh, yeah. Oh, you have to, cookies too? Yeah, all oh, the cookies with the uh, auro chocolate. Ooh. And yeah. Good made with love. Uh, there's, <laughs> with love. So there's meat here. Yeah. Spec. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Spec ham. Mm -hmm. Hi. Mm. That's good bread, man. That's good bread. Mm. <laughs> Chewy. I was so full, but like so now good. you're eating this up. Yeah. All right, Buggy King. Bread. You know, like, <laughs> a big part of it is because the bread is so good. Good uh, merienda. Mm. For dinner, we have something very special. We're dining at Roots a new fine dining restaurant run by an international trio with a stellar pedigree. Having all worked in 2023's World's Best Restaurant winner, Central Restaurant in Peru. What is this, what is this place about? <laughs> okay, welcome to Roots. Um, so first of all, I will explain a little bit the concept of the restaurant. Um, we have two chefs. Okay. One is Filippo. She's Italian, she's from Tuscany, uh -huh. from Florence. And then we have Ines. Uh, she's my sister, so we both born in Spain, Mexican father, Portuguese mother. So you will find our roots alongside the menu. Uh, and we are cooking all more family recipes or recipes from the places we've been working. The bottle is happy. Uh, but uh, with, <laughs> with Philippine ingredients. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so there you can see an art installation that we did with some of the ingredients that we are using in the menu. Oh, cool. Or that we are researching. No? Uh, later we can go there and I can explain each of the ingredients. Yeah. And also, well, then later you can walk through the space. We have a blackboard. Where where we showcase all the our collaborators. So with the people with who we are working with. Um, and also well, the menu has been designed to be shared. We recommend around two, three dishes per person, everything in the center, like tapas Spanish style. Or we just land our degustation menu. Okay. So you can check. Here it is. It's different from this. Thank you. It's different. Check both. Oh. So, um, okay. this is the degustation menu, the selection of five dishes. Sorry, sorry. Plus yeah. two desserts yeah. of yeah. the yeah. chef, yeah. no? Yeah. In San Filippo, every day, 
and they choose. Okay. We print the menu every day. Depends on what it's available in the market. Okay. It's yeah. one five, really right? good. Yeah. And it's one Thank five. You. One five per. Exactly. So if per it's person. first time, would you suggest this or him or doing for him? I will suggest um, the tasting menu. Okay. For sure. And then Ines and Filippo will bring more dishes, I know. <laughs> uh, extra dishes. Some special things. Okay. Like we have our calamansi cello sour. Okay. So it's a version. We all met while we were working in Peru. Mm -hmm. uh, so we did a twist of the traditional pisco sour. Mm -hmm. And instead of using lime, we are using calamansi. Okay. And it's good. We do it with the siphon. It's a little bit of show. So. Okay. <laughs> nice, nice. <laughs> Cheers, up. Mm. Hello, everyone. Uh, hello. How's everybody doing tonight? Everyone is doing great, yeah. All right, so first of all, welcome to Roots, guys. I'm Filippo, one of the chefs here. So it's a pleasure to see you. And uh, so let's start with some snacks from the kitchen. We yep. have here some Roots. So this is called Salvaro. It's from Pilar, north of the island. We season it uh, with a bit of vinegar salt. And on the side, we have an onion and ube emulsion. Welcome to Roots. Hope you're going to enjoy, guys. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. The sauce is like a ube sauce. Mm. Mm. <laughs> I can't believe this is from Shergao. Yeah. This is where you see good technique. You know, this is a root they've never heard of, and now it's like a prawn cracker. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Maybe with the scar. Wow, they're talented, huh? Wow. Oh my god. Wow, the ube. What was that? What was in that? A good addition to the Shargao dining seat. Yeah. I think a restaurant like this kind of makes people realize that quality, well run restaurants can exist in an island like Shargao. Here we start with our ceviche. Uh, so for you guys, we have decided to make a small change on the menu. So instead of going with Mahi Mahi, we will go with Oyong Oyong that we think that it's a, a fish that inspired us a lot because it's very similar to charela that is a fish that we were in love while we were living in peru so on the base of the plate you will find sweet potato we have the oyong on yog pickled sinkama and we will finish the dish with a leche de tigre that we make with coconut milk inspired by the filipino tequila nice wow from local the flower. Nice. That was the one in Toronto. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And on the side we have some black rockers made with squidding. Made with what? Squidding. Squidding, all right. Enjoy. All right, thank you, Chef. Welcome. I'm so impressed. Mmm, <laughs> <laughs> this is such a... This is technique. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. If you know what you're doing in the kitchen, all of the things that they're bringing out is a lot of technique. Because, like, I mean, we're kind of familiar with the with the produce here in Sergao, and this is just on a different level. They're yeah. like, it's good, it's good, it's elevating everything. And what they did with the thing, Thomas? Beautiful. Madam, the texture of the sinkamas is so porous and crunchy. Oh, yeah. The new dish of the week, we have Rainbow Runner. Uh, we uh, went this morning to the market. It was this beautiful Rainbow Runner. So we have decided to make Rainbow Runner with Puyabano. Uh, so we have a base of Puyabano. We have the Rainbow Runner that we also dress with um, a Puyabano cream. We finalize with a Curec yolk. And also we have Pepinitos. that are these green spheres. Here in Chargao, kids used to play with it. And we are trying to give a culinary Hope you like it. Sorry, what is that? Rainbow runner is a kind of fish. Okay. It's like a type, it's salmon. Okay. It's, a it's called it the Filipino salmon. salmon because it's super fatty. Nice. So for example, every time that we just cut the part of the belly, just the knife gets like super, super fatty. Yeah. And here we go with our bread Ooh. basket. We have wow. different kinds of breads. <laughs> <That is. laughs> um, come out the bread here, sourdough bread from one of our collaborators, that is Shanti Shanti here in Tenerife. Mm. And we finish with a schiacciata, that is a type of 
um, Italian focaccia, very thin. Yeah. As a dip, we have a burnt butter with the skin of the egg which is burnt, so I have the skin and a pineapple. It's cured as well. <gasps> oh, look how fudgy that is. <sighs> you know when food looks so good, you don't want to break it up. <laughs> yeah. Okay. We had a little cook one thing. Or whatever, let the jam have fun. Okay, it cooks some things watery. Like it is fatty, I guess. Yeah, you actually see it in the front of the It's true, it's like I'm now the pressure to up my game. Yeah. Or it's just a different thing. No, I don't know. It's okay. It's such a celebration. You guys will inspire each other. But later, can I explain you a little bit about the face and everything? It's good. It's good. That's why. I don't mind them being super popular and, you know, because they're good for the island. Yeah, one five and then <laughs> that's true. Metis, Metis level, yeah. Kapag. Okay, so we're gonna continue now with our dry risotto. So as everything in roots, we bring our roots to the table, no? Yeah, so I'm Italian, you know, risotto. <laughs> yeah, so we use a dry, we really fell in love with the dry and all the history behind it. Especially it was, you know, an ancestral grain here in the Philippines and it was the, you know, the staple food before rice was introduced in the country. Uh, so what we do, we just cook it like a rice, so we use all the skin of the pumpkin to cook the rice with and after we, uh, we do a puree with the pumpkin itself or calabasa and uh, we we finish with a bit of the stock that we make from the shrimps shrimps and on top we have a bit of botarga so yes. uh, oh my god and of course uh, this is not from italy uh, it's not important from italy it's made the same way so lightly smoked uh, cured and after dried and so you're gonna see on top this is actually tuna botarga this tuna yeah uh, we got like a tuna that was like 40 kilos and we were lucky enough to have some bit of uh, row in there so you know we I had to do it enjoy guys oh, nice thank you thank you <laughs> smells wow. amazing smell it. this is amazing <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, that's so creamy. Sure. Well, what if I gave you your vibe? I'm gonna eat this all air. <laughs> mm. Oh my god. Even the shrimp is smoky. Yeah. That's such an intense umami. Now it's time for the Mexican roots. <laughs> yes, ah. let's go. Ah. <laughs> All right, guys, so... Okay, so this is not really in the menu. <laughs> in Roots, uh, well, our way of thinking always the kitchen is, uh, you know, not to charge a product just for its market price, yeah, yeah. but for what is really valued. So every day we go to the market and we see what's available and, uh, and we try, you know, we're, we're not from here, so a lot of things for us are super new. So one day we found uh, the alligator fish and of course, you know, we had to try it. And uh, the fisherman, uh, you know, the market guy, he, he said, why, why would you want alligator fish? It's not nice for you. And I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, no, 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 nice. Okay, so I say, okay, I'll buy it. And we tried it and we actually really liked it. So we have alligator fish that is first cured in our oregano salt and after it's fried uh, with their scaling. So, you know, as much as zero waste, uh, of zero waste as possible. Uh, here is all the fillets and of course the head, still a bit of meat there if somebody wants to get his hand dirty. <laughs> and I'll pass the, the Mexican roots. So the idea here is to make tacos. So with the aesthetic and all everything, we were trying to replicate the Mexican taqueria, the ones, the wood ones are the ones that <coughs> To eat in the street. So here we have the mole sauce, that is a traditional Mexican sauce made with more than 40 ingredients. In this case, the idea was to substitute all the Mexican ingredients with Filipino. Mm -hmm. So all the chilies, we are treating them as Mexican chilies. We are some of them, them smoke them, or others we are drying them. Um, here we have some cabbage with pickled onion, here we have some pickled hibiscus and two spicy chilies. And here you have some um, yellow tortillas, so the idea basically is to make your own ones. Right. How do you like it? Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Wow. Alligator. <laughs> wow. Maha. Alligator tacos. <laughs> Alligator fish tacos. <laughs> Thank you, Saul. Oh, really? Can I sit down? Oh, I grab it. I want to try all of them on their own. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. Good. Ay, that mole is good. It's quite nutty. The mole? Yeah, and spicy. Yeah, the... What's this? I think chili, maybe? Let's find out. Yeah, I would, I would think that's what I thought yeah. it was going to be going. Oh my god, this is like the bougiest taco I've eaten in my life. Have good um, tortilla too. Now, that's um, that's a lot of um, precision and uh, just well trained. Do you guys need more tortilla? Yes, Feel yes. Free. More. Okay, want a piece more? No? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Dinner now with uh, octopus and mongo. Okay. So, uh, to get octopus here, it's always a challenge. My octopus man was drunk and hangover for the last two weeks. <laughs> so, this is the, the last octopus we got for we don't know how long. Uh, what we have here is well cooked octopus that is fried. And on the side, we have uh, uh, mongo beans. So, we cook the mongo beans with the octopus heads. So, we use all the octopus ink and the octopus liver as uh, the sofrito base to give the mongos more flavor. Flavor. And after we just do a mousse with it. Yeah, you can taste some mongo, but you can really taste the ink. Oh wow. Mm. God. Oh. oh. So here we have our Yay. juice of the classical lemon pipe, but executed with different kind of native citrus from the Philippines. So we have talandan, uh, native mandarin, and of course, um, calamansi. And here we go with our chocolate and chili. We use the chocolate from Davao, from Alagos Farm, a native cacao from the Philippines. We make different textures with it. And on top, we have a syrup that we make with ammonia chili, so it's quite spicy. Yeah. Yes. Thank you very much. Is there an order you would eat them in? Uh, I will start definitely for the calamansi. And okay. they would All right. this one because this one it's kind of bitter and very chocolate flavor. Okay. And this one is a little bit yeah. more sour than. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Gracias. All right. I'm going for the. Whoa. Oh, it looks like pomelo. pomelo. Whoa. They knew you. They know you, Jabes. <laughs> mm. 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 Like a lemon meringue. Mmm. Oh, it's pomelo is com so complimentary. Mmm. It almost like no, no, it it's almost has patis. I'm not sure. I know what you mean. It has a, like a savory umami, like borderline Maybe patis. The pomelos here are not sweet. I've had so much more really nice, juicy, sweet pomelos. Pomelo here, no. Why is that? I don't know. We get it. We probably get the low quality pomelos. But hey, they were able to make it work with this yeah, dish. Yeah, yeah. Just like the alligator fish. And then they put their techniques into it and it becomes good. It's a well rounded dish. This chocolate dish is amazing. I'm not really into chocolates, but it's good. Mm. Oh my god. Mm. That's so intense. This is how we finish dinner at my house in Italy. Like, yeah. uh, with my grandma, we always make limoncello. Of course, here... Uh, Can I have the calamansi? Of course, here, uh, lemons is not really uh, available, so we use calamansi uh, to make our calamansi cello. That is the base of our calamansi sour. So we have here a maceration of two weeks, uh, and uh, all the calamansi that we get in the restaurant, uh, that is between three to seven kilos uh, per day. We grate them because we cannot really cut the calamansi skin to do this because it take, <laughs> I tried the first time and after five minutes I'm like, ah, oh, no, <laughs> it's not going to work. Yeah. So we just grate the skin, we macerate it in a gym base and after we are just a bit of simple syrup. <laughs> Thank you very much. So this is our maceration. So you can imagine uh, all of the green part is all calamansi skin. <laughs> so you can imagine how much calamansi is in here. All of this is just calamansi skin. Amazing, very very amazing. Good, good. Bravo, bravo. Well done. Congrats, really. Mm. Um, this is going to be good for the island. <laughs> yeah. Mm. And it's nice how you guys uh, made our humble ingredients very elevated, you know? And uh, you brought it to a, you gave it a different light, and 
I guess we've been coming here to the island for a while and I've never like had these kind of flavors using the, these ingredients. On the beginning we thought, okay, let's try to make Filipino cuisine, but there's no way that we are going to make Filipino cuisine better than Filipino people. So what we can do is take these ingredients that inspire us and take our family recipes and try to um, not revalue, but yes, um, embrace these ingredients, but just with our approach, no? Ah, we're still in the beginning. I think we have so much more to improve and to learn more than anything. Yeah. We just open. We just open and we just move to the Philippines. Yes. Well. The next evening, David hosts dinner at his house here in Sergao. We invited my friend and fellow chef Gringo, whom you met in episode two, along with Marina, Filippo, and Ines of Roots to come jam with us. Oh wow, this is a hub. <laughs> All right. The shrimp, I just need to slice it. And then, the I'm going to... Yeah, the vein. Um, and then, I'm just going to quickly soak it in salted water with ginger. And then, for 10 minutes, Shrimp head, shrimp skin, anato oil, bay leaf. Pretty much that's it. And then maybe, maybe, maybe I'll add one dried fish. Oh, you know what? Because I don't have space, I'm gonna deep fry my fish here. Fish can go with the parang maybe like a pulutan or appetizer. All in one pot. Sienteng bela lebaton. That's what he taught me. Um, rinse your kinilo with, with salted water and ginger, and later, it's the 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 texture is bouncier. Parang it develops an outer layer. But of course, you have to remove it after 10 minutes, or else you'll over cure it. Uh -oh. Martha Stewart. I wouldn't have gotten all those flavors in that time. James, will I marinate it when it's sliced or will uh, I slice it later? Whole, whole. Whole, right? Yeah. Sorry, ah. Kahapo, nakita ko kasi yung isang local, he was deboning the subais with his hand. How? Yeah. Wala, isang peel lang. I don't know how he did it. <laughs> Leaves lang to. Okay. I was actually brainstorming for the past two days and nothing was coming out. <laughs> and then finally when we went to the market today. Mm -hmm. Parang it's slow cooking talaga. Like I've cooked this fish so many times, but it's tonight I'm trying to. I mean tonight I'm getting to know the ingredient more. This uh, flying fish is so flexible. It can go to a salad, to a topping, to a soup. I mean, you know. garlic rice and fried egg for breakfast. There you go. Hello. Welcome. Welcome. Hey. Come to our house. You guys, welcome. Hey. Hello. Hello. What's up? Hello. 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 Hello.
Um, but th this one is a chicken. What do you call it? Chicken tinona. Have you tried chicken tinona? Yeah. Yeah. So it's uh, our our uh, twist would be adding guava. Okay. And uh, salting it with um, flavoring it with uh, bangsi with the flying fish. Okay. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, since we start studying you know, the gastronomic culture and everything, it's been so like interesting to see all this similarity, and not only from like uh, let's say from Spain, uh, you know, to to, to Philippines uh, through Mexico, uh -huh. but even from Philippines to Spain. Yeah. So like the squeezing. Uh, mostly of the sailors who came to the Philippines from Spain were from the past countries. And uh, in Spain, like in the 16th, 17th century, it was prohibited uh -huh. to use uh, squid ink because the church uh, said it was from, uh, you know, it's from the devil, it's black, you cannot eat it. And when the sailor came to the Philippines and saw the local, uh, you know, communities eat it, they brought right. back this to Spain. And now in the Basque country, yeah. uh, most of their traditional dishes are with squid ink. Wow. Saul has just arrived two months, three months ago? Three months ago. So in terms of ingredients, you six months, you three months, like, what do you, how do you guys find Filipino ingredients? Uh, or what's your favorite? I, I, think, I think we, we really love, we really love a lot, a lot of different things. Uh, for saying like uh, pomelo, different kinds of citrus, biasson, and calamansi number one, and we super, super love it. Uh -huh. And especially for, uh, like in Peru, uh, lime is super important, it's very special lime in Peru, yeah. uh, to make all the ceviche and everything. But the lime, you just need to use it like after two, three hours you squeeze, you cannot uh -huh. use it anymore. You change the flavor. Uh -huh. We said that with calamansi, it holds way better. And uh -huh. it's, uh, when the calamansi is super fresh and it's nice and green, it's like, I think one of the best citrus we we, we tried so far. But it's nice that you're really discovering. Yeah, you know? I mean, the, the first uh, the first month we were here, we went with uh, one of our market suppliers, mm -hmm. uh, me and Marina. Yeah. We went. Uh, we wanted to see where the vegetables come from. So we went with them uh, in the truck with them. We got the boat from Dapa. We went to Surigao and from uh -huh. Surigao to Cagayan de Oro. And nice. we arrived there to the main market at three o'clock in the morning. And uh, you know, just discovering everything that uh, that, that, that was there for us is super new. Yeah. And see how the all the agricultural system works, you know, because from Cagayan and from Davao, it's where we you get all the ingredients here in uh, in Shargao and almost in all Mindanao mm -hmm. and even in almost all Visaya. Flying fish, guava, get get wow. more ginger. Wow, well, yeah, yeah. Spring onions, onions ginger. and uh, shrimp oil. How do you call this? I don't know. Ah, um, just, just, just for us. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Ang iba, ang iba, ibutang talang juta, ito sa itaping tang iban. No? Okay. More pa? Moringa. Moringa, uh, chicharon. Yes. Uh, peanuts. And shrimp oil. Oh, that's amazing. Uh, this is the that's the tinola. The, and usually you make it with seafood and fish or with. We normally, chicken? it's always with chicken. Okay. The best tinola is always with native chicken, which is the tough chicken, the gamey chicken. Okay. It's tough, but if you cook it really long, then you get the flavor. It's very deep, um, gamey, meaty. Like all you need is, like towards the end, is fish sauce, a good fish sauce, or sea salt. That's it. Okay. Um, so we're having this. Did you try this? Yeah, yeah the one I was in. Okay, so we're having this, which sort of like this. That's the condiment. Combination. Yeah. Because normally it's just a soup, right? Yeah, so let's see. I don't know yet, but let's see. <laughs> what I know is that this is ready. So here we have uh, Marto. This is the producer. Crazy, crazy petnut. So ancestral method uh, wine. Mm -hmm. With the yeast uh, still here. Orange wine. So it's made, uh, it's a white wine that is made with a red wine making process. So where we, we leave, you leave the skin in uh, maceration mm -hmm. with the grape juice, mm -hmm. so it gets this uh, color. It's a bit funky on the nose, but when it opens, it's... When it opens. Mm. We're still looking for that. Yeah, of course there'll be some resistance and it's normal, because you guys are breaking barriers, but it's going to be all good. I think, yeah. Thank I mean, that's my two, my, my <laughs> dos, dos centimo. <laughs> I don't know if I said that right. And now, we're just in the beginning, you know, like, we still have so much to learn and so much to understand. Yeah. Because, you know, I, that's the good thing, I think, that the Philippines as forgers has so many incredible and interesting things to offer in terms of 
biodiversity in terms of cultural history of te ancestral techniques like for example when we discovered the life we were like wow this is so interesting like a product like <laughs> this has been in the Philippines before so you've right? never had anything similar to Adlai? No, nothing. Really? Is it okay that you're using Adlai as in your risotto? Yeah, because uh, like uh, in roots we don't say that we make Filipino food or right. Italian food or right, right, any right. Kind of food. No, but you as an Italian, not mm -hmm. as a, as the restaurant. Yeah. You as a person, like ah, we believe in freedom, like. Yeah, yeah, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, we're you know, not so don't good. ask him to put cheese with fish in a pasta yeah, yeah. because that's when he gets angry. But okay, <laughs> that's the line. That's fish the line. Pasta, fish pasta. <laughs> <laughs> so the shrimp is a shrimp in a lao. It's a shrimp canela, but we used, I think... Watermelon. Watermelon, oh, wow. tuba, uh, um, biasong, uh, and then the oranges. oranges. Yeah, just... just uh, and the so a lot of acid. But just the orange to round it off, right? Yes, yes. yes. And then we put, uh, we put something. We'll, we'll tell you later, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. Let's try to find... Yeah, that'll be the game, but basically... I'll speak in Tagalog so they won't understand. Uh, we put it in the I think they were so easy. Oh, 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 oh. That's an interesting addition, I think, the nata de coco. Yeah, yeah. And then the nata de coco, we, we treated it like a salsa. You know, um, we use calamansi, red onions, nata de coco. And uh, orange zest, right? Mm -hmm. That's it. Uh, yeah. And then um, the rice, Gringo mixed the rice and made the fish oil. From the chicken? Oh no no, it's a ah, shrimp, oil. Shrimp, shrimp oil. I yeah. it in there, and then you added the dried the dried fish. XO almost. Yeah. Oh. So this is like a sev inspired uh, garlic rice, oh, yeah. where it's you know anato based, <laughs> but uh, different toppings, which is the that fish, and then that's our salad. And then after that, we have a soup dish. All right. And then we have cheese. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, right. please. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, yeah. cheers, 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 cheers. Cheers. Salud. Salud, Salud. to uh, Siargao. <laughs> to the food here in Siargao. Because in the beginning, we wanted to some Malong guy to put in the entrance of the restaurant. And yeah. in Marina, we went to say, in the back roads to look for a plant, to, to grab a little, a little trench, you know, to, to put in the restaurant. And an uh, old lady saw us and she was like, what are you guys doing? Because it was just like, you know, us looking around at flowers or whatever. Mm. We asked, no, we're looking for Malungai. Malungai. She's like, ah, yeah, come with me, I have. <laughs> so we follow her for five minutes, you know, in the back road. And she's like, ah, this is my Malungai, a super big tree. And she asked her, would you like some? And we said, yeah, please, it would be amazing. Thank you, salamat kerajao. And she grabbed a machete and just cut down the tree. Like, boom. This is yours. Yeah, it's like, yeah, this is yours. <laughs> so I went back with a two meter tall Malungai tree. I hope. The rice, you have to put some of this on the rice, okay? Okay. 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 Oh, with the yes, because we are all in, uh, we are, yeah, we are all um, intertwining from each other. So we have here, of course, the bread that you brought without the tortilla de patata. <laughs> and then uh, this is the uh, chicken, oh, where's David? Wait, I have to wait for David. Hmm? It's chicken tinola with lots of tomatoes. Wow. And then I put some of the native chicken on the side. So just use your use your um, fingers to just pick through the chicken. There's, you know, it's nice. It's like a, having good shrimp that you peel it, you know, or clams. So same with the chicken. It's really gamey, really deep. So just go through the bones and just what yeah. Get some, yeah. Get some bread. Get some bread. I guess finish with a soup. It's we made it very simple and straightforward mm. because you know at the end of the day you just want to be home. Yeah, yeah completely. Yeah. It tastes like home. And uh, when I start culinary school, and uh, they teach you know the proper way and everything, mm -hmm. and you cook with your grandma, and you're like, oh, this is wrong. But after her food is always better than yours, so it's like maybe I am wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I was telling David earlier that this is my, in like maybe in the 10 years I've been going back and forth, 
or so, this is the most stimulating in terms of food. Because normally, the banyigs, it's just so straightforward and simple. Limited. Limit, there's the word, limited. All these like um, people migrating to the island that are giving, that are actually, it's funny because they either they directly or indirectly influence or make us realize how good our food is or how our ingredients like recently with you guys you know the humble alligator fish the sayote the kinkamas that was thinly sliced Whew. that was beautiful and then these guys then i guess everyone uh, everyone's playing a part. Are you guys happy to be here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think we are very, very happy. We, we've been building this project for the last three years, uh, yeah. doing meetings online uh, because we were living in different parts of the world and everything. And after the, these three years, we were ready to start and we were looking for a location. Uh -huh. So when one of our partners proposed us, uh, you know, uh, Shargao in the Philippines, uh, and when first we Google where is Shargao and we saw the place and actually Marina first comment was like I always wanted to live there. So basically we, we met when we were working in Peru and I think it was a very important moment in uh, at least in our careers because as the chefs uh, for the past 10 years before going to Central as chefs our work was to be just inside of a kitchen of these four walls. For me as a chef working in a research center, going to Los Andes, uh, seeing different kind of ingredients or um, just or for example organizing a, a project with different kind of artisans from, from Lima was super interesting. So I think this was a, a very important moment in our career where we realized that as a chef we could do more than just get inside, and uh, stay inside of these four walls. And this restaurant happens to be one of the best restaurants exactly. in the world, right? <laughs> Which is central. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. It was very inspiring. And during that moment also COVID happened. So we start thinking and that's when we start putting the pieces together. Yeah. Marina is our designer. There was the project manager, then Ricardo and, and then. And then um, Ricardo that is living in Manila, he's married with a Filipino. Uh, he proposed this beautiful location that is Chicago. Nice. And as Filippo was saying before, I think it was very easy to fall in love with this place, with this community. So it was easy and, to and make with the decision. Philippines in general, like the, the way Filipino understands food or feel for food is such an important part of Filipinos' life that is really close to our culture. You know, first is food and after is the rest, yeah. always. And I think we really fell in love and we're so surprised, it's like why Filipino food is not so famous around the world as can be Vietnamese food or Thai food because Filipino food has so much to offer, such a different diversity in all the country, you know, it's a super big archipelago with so many different island cultural influences and uh, trades from, you know, centuries ago and uh, the, the culinary culture, you know, we really think that you, we always start to see a country uh, through the eyes of food, we really believe that in food there is a history and there is traditions behind. And, uh, and yeah, I think we fell in love with the first days we were here and uh, we are still surprised every day from what we learn from the market and, you know, and from, you know, from people like you who come here and just show us, you know, the good one and we're like, oh, wow, it's, you know, it's... And, uh, <laughs> and you were saying the other day that every time we drive the motorcycle on the on tourism road, you're still smiling? <laughs> yeah, because, you know, for us, we come from, you know, uh, Italy, Spain, you know, we don't even have palm trees, so you, know, <laughs> you drive and you're like surrounded by palm trees and you're like, you know, for us, this is like, a, you know, it's the dream, you know, it's a dream that you never do and we're still here, we've been living here for six months and every day is still like, even if it's raining, it's still like, a, wow, you know, this is something. And, uh, and the community really welcome us super warmly. And uh, I think we were lucky. Exciting times, <laughs> really. <laughs> because of these conversations, we will, uh, all of us, I guess, will help each other put Philippine food on the map. There. Amen. Cheers. Cheers. Now, you know, the wheel is starting to spin slowly. There's like a guy championing ceviche, or our version of ceviche, which is kinilao. Then there's still Katangnan Barbecue, which is like a no-brainer, you know, for what you're paying. And it's right there in front of you. And it's so busy that they don't even freeze their meat. And it's just, you know, a marinade, a good marinade. Simple, cheap. We have you guys that are 
trying to really push the envelope. And us Filipinos, we see a lot of respect from you guys because you use our local ingredients like in a way that we've never seen and tried and tasted before. You know, and it's still good. We have the right personalities for the evolution of the food scene here in Sierra We have comfort food, we have like stimulating food, we have fun food. The easy way is to just set up something and, you know, run it because you want more money. But I guess if you want to feed the soul, which Sergo is all about. Sergo is all about soul. And I think it's starting to balance out the soul, surf, and the food. So yeah, so we all play a part and uh, baby steps and we'll get there. Amen. I realize now that the conversations and the amazing food we've had over the past couple of days reflect the reason why Sergao is one of a kind in the Philippines. Perhaps on no other island do we regularly have the chance for this kind of meeting of the minds, with mutual respect between world-class professionals from around the world and talented open-minded locals where each can learn from the other, then work together to make something amazing and uniquely Sergao.